Section 4.1 is on interpreting graphs. So today we're going to be looking at several um, pictures and um, interpreting what that could look like as a graph. And we're going to look at graphs and interpret what that means. So a picture can be worth a thousand words. In this lesson you'll investigate the relationship between real world situations and their graphs. So let's take a look at the first example. What is the real world meaning of this graph? What does the y-intercept represent and what does the x-intercept represent? So take a look at what's pictured here. We have price of a haircut and number of customers each week. So what this graph means right here is, um, is the price of the haircut going um, up or down this way? So it's going up this way. And as the price of the haircut increases, what is happening to the number of customers? So you should notice that as the price of the haircut increases, the number of customers decrease. And that is one way we could explain the real world meaning of the graph. So as the number of customers, sorry, as the price of a haircut increases, the number of customers decreases. What does the y-intercept represent? The y-intercept is where your line meets the y-axis. So here's the y-intercept. And what does it mean? Well, it means that there's going to be a lot of customers if the price of the haircut is zero or very low. So a lot of customers when the price is zero, if that's how they're scaling their graph, or if it's low. What does the x-intercept mean? Well, it means when the price of the haircut is really high, there's zero customers. All right, let's look at the next problem. Students at Central High are complaining that the juice vending machine is frequently empty. Several student council members decided to study this problem. They record the number of cans in the machine at various times during the day and they graphed it. So here it's full in the morning, goes down, and so on. Okay, we're going to interpret this graph. Based on the graph, at what time is juice most consumed most rap rapidly? Okay, so take a look, look at your graph. When is the line going down at its steepest? And it might be going down at its steepest from 11.30 a.m., right here, uh, to 12.30, right here. Right here, it looks like it's steepest. And also from 3 to 3.30. When is the machine refilled? How can you tell? Well, when it goes down, but then right back up, that's probably when the machine is refilled. When is the machine empty? Well, when the line goes down to empty. And what do you think the student council will recommend us to solve this problem? Okay, so th these are the types of questions you'll see on your assignment today. And in class, we talk about why do you think between 11, 11.30 and 12.30 and 3.30 and 4 that more juice is being consumed? And it might be lunchtime or the end of school. Another way to represent the number of cans in the juice machine is by using a piecewise function. So here's just another way to represent this information. Okay, and we'll take a look at piecewise later on this year. Okay, why don't you try to sketch a graph that reflects the information in the story. It was a dark and stormy night. Before the torrents of rain came, the, came, the bucket was empty. The rain subsided at daybreak. The bucket remained untouched until old dog Trey Arrived as thirsty as a dog, the sun shone brightly through the afternoon, then Billy the kid arrived and kicked the bucket over. Okay, so let's try to make a graph. So this is going the other way, making a graph to fit the story before we were trying to think of a situation to fit the graph. So if we go here, our graph may look something like this. 
We have a couple of variables here, time, and we have the amount of water in the bucket. Okay, so the bucket starts empty. We might start right here. And um, torrents of rain came. So at a very steep rate, the bucket might have filled. At um, daybreak, the rain subsided. So the bucket probably stayed the same amount for a while. The bucket remained untouched. All right, so maybe it goes down a little bit because of evaporation until old dog Trey came arrived as, and arrived as thirsty as a dog. All right, so he drank some water out of the bucket, so it probably goes down a little bit. The sun shone brightly through the afternoon, so again, evaporation. Then Billy the kid arrived and he kicked the bucket over, so then we have a steep line right there going down. Okay, so there might be a graph to represent the situation. Create a story for the following graph. This graph tells a story. It could be a story about a lake, a bathtub, or whatever you imagine. Spend some time with your group discussing the information contained in the graph. So now write a story. We're going the opposite way. I give you a graph. Can you write a story that would represent this information? Okay, so you can think about that. Here's your assignment then. It's a pretty short assignment, 4-1.